The Valley Connection is sponsored and produced by RPS Video Productions and also sponsored in part by The Golf Bag Skate. Don't carry your bag, roll it with The Golf Bag Skate. Welcome to this edition of the Valley Connection, a monthly show designed to keep you informed of our Valley's issues, concerns, and events, and brought to you by RPS Video Recording Services. I'm Nancy Lopez. And I'm Cesaria Hernandez, and we are so glad that you could join us for this month's show. That's right. My voice is a little bit better. Not Sounding a lot, good. but I'm working on Sounding it. Sounding good. <laughs> anyway, we are going to kick off the show with one of my very favorite places to visit, the community of Idlewild up in the beautiful San Jacinto Mountains. That's right. It's just a 27-mile drive right up the hill. And you know what, Nancy? You get up there in that mountain community, and they have such great art, such great food. So we took our crew up there to find out just a little bit more about it. And then we're going to our local historian, Rob Lindquist, and he's going to give us a little bit of history of the Massacre Canyon. And then I was out at the Hemet Model Masters Air Park. Did you even know that there was an air park? No. Yeah, you can go out there and fly little model planes. It's fascinating. Anyhow, they've got a great event coming up, and we're going to tell you all about it. And then I got to sit down with the general manager of Valleywide Recreation and Park District, Dean Wetter, and he is going to be talking about some of the upcoming events. And we are going to wrap it up by presenting our Valley's Student of the Month. So you're not going to want to go anywhere. Sit back and enjoy the rest of the show. Experience the story that moved the hearts and minds of our nation. Experience the pageantry and the spectacle that is Ramona. For tickets, go to RamonaBowl.com or call today. Just a short drive up the hill from Hammett is the beautiful town of Idlewild. One of our most favorite past segments on Idlewild was having a chance to speak with the local chainsaw artist, David Roy. Let's join Ken Carlson as he tells us more about the village in the pines, Idlewild. Idlewild is a fun little bit in the mountains above the Palm Springs area. People come to get away. We have hiking in the mountains. People come up and play in the snow. We've got a couple of dozen restaurants, half of which offer music entertainment in the evenings. We've got art galleries, fun activities in town. You want to get away, less than an hour's drive, you can be in a completely different place. You'd never believe that you were near the city. Our anniversary, um, our wedding anniversary, and we saw this little pottery place and decided that this would be um, a great way to collect our memory and have a memory of our time up here. And so we're picking out a heart and we're painting it. And um, the gentleman here is going to mail it to us. Um, we're from San Diego, so we aren't going to be here too much longer. But we're just enjoying our time together and creating something out of love. Idlewild has over a dozen art galleries. We have a summer art festival. We have an international film festival. It's a place where the artist is welcome and the art appreciator will find what they want. Up here in the wilderness, we combine our art with nature. With me is David Roy, one of our favorite local artists, standing in front of a sculpture that he's been working on for over two years. We're very proud of what he's done. Tell us about what this is on. Well, what I'm trying to do is represent the nature of Idlewild. You know, animals past and present, you know, representing the mountain. I'm gonna do a lot of stone work. It's also gonna be a photo opportunity for Idlewild. You know, that people will be able to come and have their photograph 
it's going to be bumped up another six foot and there's going to be a trail leading up to this centerpiece which is a photo opportunity and uh, it'll give a chance for people to get to photographs and walk on a sculpture that's I, I see that you're holding a chainsaw. Well, this is my favorite weapon right here. It's what I do all my fine work with. I'll work with bigger saws to begin with, but this is the one that I uh, choose to do all my detail with. What did you start with? Started with uh, four logs that I glued together with Gorilla Glue. A little pitch for Gorilla Glue, even though they've never answered my calls. But anyway, it's probably one of the biggest Gorilla Glued projects ever. And, uh, and we had to do that because we don't have a nine, 10 foot diameter log up here. So we put an old growth cedar together and uh, gonna uh, carve a monument out of it. So did you carve this entire monument just using chainsaws? It's all been chainsaws so far. I've done about maybe an hour or two of power tools on the detail work, you know, the teeth and so forth. But all the feather work, fur work, everything's been done with, with this saw. The uh, animals all look accurate and life-size. Are they to scale? Um, as far as I can do, you know, it gets a little off, you know, but I'm trying to keep it to scale with one another and life-size, because I think that gives a bigger impression to do life-size. Makes things more real, like they may have existed. In fact, these animals did exist at one time. And at the end of the day, there's nothing like having dinner and a glass of wine next to a nice warm fire. That's what we do. I really like my golf bag skate. Now that I'm older, this 60 pound bag's pretty heavy. Now I can get it to the cart without any pain to my back or knees. The reliable, adjustable golf bag skate, powder coated steel with durable wheels, is made in San Jacinto, California. I love my golf bag skate. Since my bag is so heavy and I'm so little, it makes it hard for me to get it from the car to the cart. It allows me just to get out here and I'm ready to play. Roll your heavy golf bag with ease. Visit our website at thegolfbagsgate.com. We're here at North Mountain, north of San Jacinto. We're in a canyon. It's called the Master Canyon. It's also, it has Potrero Creek running through it. That's up from the old Potrero Ranch and it comes down through here. We're going to go into this canyon, we're going to see some very interesting things, both geological and man-made. One of the things that we start with is this nice elderberry right here. This site was a site of a massacre that occurred about 400 years ago with the Indians. But let's go on and let's go in. There's some archaeology in here that you'll be interested in seeing. We're back in the canyon now, quite a ways in, and what's behind me is a major piece of industrial architecture that dates back to the late 80s or early 90s of the 19th century. This is the Schneider Lime Quarry and the Lime Mill with its beautiful kilns. And these kilns, made out of heavy stone, was where the limestone was reduced down to powder and the powder essentially was the main component of what cement is made out of. What I have in my hand is literally burnt limestone. It makes this powder which again went into making the cement and the cement you'll find everywhere. The Estadillo house I believe has lime that came. Its cement contains the same 
lime is mined out of this area. So what we'll do next is go up farther and, uh, and actually see where this limestone was mined out of the, out of the mountain. It was a big, big deposit here where the San Jacinto Fault runs through this mountain, the North Mountain. So we'll go up and look at that, and that was the source of this major industry. This industry has some history, and we're going to go on to a couple other places that will show you that. As we viewed this canyon, you'll notice that, uh, that the sides of the canyon seem to, to be sliding back and forth. I mean, they're, they're stationary, but they look like they've gone by each other. And that forms a kind of an S characteristic to the, to the lower canyon here in the Potrero Creek area. And that is all indicative of this tremendous earth movement that goes on here in the Claremont San Jacinto Fault System. And if you look up high uh, in, the, in the shots that you're looking at now, you'll see this intruded formation of limestone that was the source of the mining operation here. What you're looking at here is another lime kiln. It predates the one we were looking at before. This one may go back into the Mexican-American period. It may go back to the Spanish period. It's a very, very old kiln, and it shows that this industry was going on for quite a long time during the 19th century. deeper in the canyon and I've got to tell you this is an area of power of geological power but power that the Indians respected and revered and if you look at this oh so magnificent and then turn and what do you find the Masker Canyon Fall a more idyllic beautiful place you cannot find in the San Jacinto Valley what a resource we need to take care of these things we need to honor and revere these things this is too beautiful to be lost. Welcome back to the show. Now, Nancy, a while back, I got to go out to the Hemet Air Park and see these incredible model planes in action. And they are going to be hosting a great event out there coming up in April. It is the 35th anniversary of the U.S. Scale Masters. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a big, big show. But we just wanted to give you a little taste of what you might see. of soaring up above it all, but maybe you don't have your pilot's license like me. Well, you know what? I think I found our answer. I'm out here in Southwest Hemet at the Hemet Model Masters Air Park, where your fantasies can take flight. In this segment, some of the RC planes are from a past Scale Masters regional qualifier. I'm here with Hemet Model Masters President Harold Hodgerson. And Harold, tell me just a little bit about the club. We have approximately 145 members of the club. We fly out here seven days a week. Uh, we're uh, usually here till noon every day. Uh, on the weekends, they fly a little later. 
release this uh, feel from the city of Hemet, which have done real good for us. Um, we welcome new members. We're looking for new members all the time, especially younger guys. Uh, teenagers really do us a good job if they'll come out. Now, you guys have been in existence since 1976, a long, long time. Yes, it's a, an older club. We've only been at this location about 20 years. They used to fly out of dirt field off, off of Warren Road, but uh, they've been in business here about 20 years, so uh, it's, I've been in the club about 16 years. Well, let's talk just a little bit about the air park here. This is quite a state-of-the-art facility. Yes, uh, like I say, we lease it from the city. Uh, we have a nice runway here, about 800 feet long, about 60 feet wide. Uh, most everything uh, can land here with no problems. Most clubs are not as lucky as we are to have a paved field. We have uh, a fence here that for uh, protection for the spectators. Uh, and we're also members of AMA, which is the Academy of Model Aeronautics, uh, a national organization, and we're insured by uh, them for two, two million dollars. Wow, well now then tell me, when people come out here, there's also a viewing area for the public. You don't have to be a member to come out here and watch all the fun. Oh, we welcome members, to, uh, spectators to come out. Uh, they, we have chairs out here where they're welcome to come sit and watch us anytime they want to. Let's talk just a little bit about the different types of planes that we have out here. We have just about every kind that was made from, from the early ones, uh, from, from the Wright brothers all the way up to jets. Uh, we have uh, warbirds, we have civilian airplanes, we have biplanes, we have pre-war, uh, they call it the 30s, uh, airplanes. Anything you want, we've got it out here. And we have also have trainers for, uh, you know, people we uh, train on buddy boxes. And a lot of these are just uh, models, they're radio control models, they are no specific type of airplanes, they're just models. And that's usually what you start out with. Um, Art, you've been doing this for a long time. What got you interested in this particular sport? My uncle, right after the Second World War, bought me my first airplane and I've been building models and I've loved models ever since. That is amazing. Now, how far how far out do, does the radio control go? How, how far can we actually fly these things? How far can you see? That's it. Uh, the average distance of the radio is anywhere three, three and a half to five miles. That's the, uh, uh, but you can't see that far. So we fly what's called line of sight. You know, once the plane gets out so far, it turns into a spot in the sky and you cannot tell what it's doing or what direction it's flying. So you want to keep it within a, a local range, you know, where you can keep an eye on it. So it's not just how the plane looks, but also how it flies and how the pilot flies. It. I'm out here with father and son team Kevin and Michael McDonald. And Kevin is an experienced flyer that's been doing this, I understand, ever since you were your son's age. That's right. For about the last 30, 35 years. Wow, now you guys are using the buddy box system. How does that work? Well, I have control of the airplane, and what happens is when I hit the switch and I hold it down, it gives him control of the airplane, and while he's flying, if he gets in trouble, I release it and I'll save him. That way we save on the crashes. <laughs> well, now then, tell me, Michael, how are you enjoying this? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Now, you've only been at it since Christmas time, correct? Yeah. What's the hardest part about this? Uh, trying to land it. <laughs> Trying to land it, but you're getting much better at that, aren't you? Yeah. Oh! Now, Paul, are you going to rebuild the Barbagene here, or is she expensive kindling? This is what they call a trash bag landing. <laughs> this plane will be in a trash bag, and uh, it will the guts will be pulled out, and we'll throw it in another airplane. Within a week or two, we'll have a new plane, and this one's going to uh, airplane heaven. <laughs> we have 
have had such an exciting day out here at the air park. Now, if you'd like to get involved, you can always go to their meetings. They are held the third Monday evening of each month over at Valley Wide. And remember, you don't even have to have a plane to come out here and have fun. They actually have trial planes that they will help you learn how to use. We're going to be right back with more of the Valley Connection right after this. And welcome back. I'm with Dean Wetter, and he is the General Manager for Valleywide Recreation and Park District. And welcome. Thank you for being on our show. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. And this is your first time. You've never been on before, it so is. glad to have you here. Thank you again. I know Valleywide actually has a lot of parks within the district. Exactly how many parks do you have? Well, we've really grown. Uh, we have almost 80 parks now. Uh, we service 12 community centers as well as a golf course and two aquatic facilities. We cover a large district area, 800 square miles. And so we encompass French Valley, Winchester, the city of Menifee, the cities of Hemet and Seneseno, as well as the unincorporated areas of Valla Vista and the surrounding areas. So it keeps you very busy. Absolutely. <laughs> well, speaking of busy, I know spring is right around the corner. Actually, it's about here. So you have a lot of events that's coming up. Why don't you share some of the things that the community can get involved in? Thank you very much for that opportunity. Our first event coming up is uh, our weekend fundraiser. And we do that with the Exchange Club and the Friends of Valley Wide Foundation. And this is a two-day event. It starts off with a golf tournament out at the beautiful golf course at Saboba Springs Country Club. And then we also have a dinner auction, which happens at our Valley Wide Sports Center at Regional Park on Esplanade. And the theme for that this year is? It is a new theme, and it is under the big top, which is a vintage circus theme. So uh -oh. it's, it's going to be a great time. Oh, sounds wonderful. Okay, and then after that, you have... Well, we start off the uh, season with, uh, actually the best way to start off the uh, baseball and softball season is with opening day. And that is where we have about 1,800 people show up to our regional park where uh, the kids get a chance to have a pancake breakfast and be dressed up in their uniforms. And they get to run the bases as their names are called. And that's right, every kid's name is called. Wow. So it's a great event. And that's an annual event. You do this that every year at the beginning event. of the season. Yes, it is. Okay, and what about Easter, I know you do a lot at Easter. Easter is a great, a great time for us. Uh, we're very, very pleased to offer the bunny hop, which uh, we do a number of 5K runs every year, but this one's with a little Easter twist. And so it has a little something for every age group uh, to run in that. Mm -hmm. And also uh, opportunity for the Easter bunny to show up and uh, take some pictures as well. Do you do the egg hunt this year? We do do the egg hunt. So the uh, bunny hop is on April 12th. And then following on April 19th, we have an egg, an egg hunt at three different sites within our district. So we'd like to spread that and have everybody have an opportunity. But Diamond Valley Lake Community Park has an Easter egg hunt, as well as Marion Ashley in Menifee, mm -hmm. as well as Rancho Bella Vista in French Valley area. So oh, okay. we're very pleased with that. And those are always a huge hit and a great turnout. Kids love those. Oh, yes. <laughs> Even adults. Absolutely. <laughs> we still never get over hunting mm -hmm. for Easter eggs. <laughs> yes, a little something for everybody. And anything else coming up after that? or is it? Well, we do have the Mud Run, which is another great event. That's a 5K, and that comes out on May 17th. And tickets are on sale now for that. Uh, that's another great opportunity for people to have a, a great time with their family out at our facilities, and we're pleased to help sponsor that as well. I'm going to do that one of these days. I keep saying that anyway. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to that. And something I would like to mention, I know you guys took over the Echo Hills Golf Course not too long ago. How is that going? Well, thank you very much for asking. We are coming up on our one-year anniversary, believe it or not. The course is doing great. It's really maturing well. And we were so proud to be part of bringing back a landmark to the community. And that's been one of the largest comments we've received of how people learned how to play golf there and their grandparents play golf. So we are so happy about bringing a healthy lifestyle amenity back to 
Kemet and San Jacinto. Why don't you uh, share your website with us in case anybody wants more information? Yes, for more information, you can visit us at vwrpd.org yeah. or call us at the office at 654 1505. Thank you so much, Dean, for being with us. We appreciate you sharing all the events that's coming up, and I know our community appreciates so much of what you do. So thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, and what a pleasure. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more of the show after this. Thank, thank you so you much, Phil. Phil. I do appreciate it. Okay. Hi, I'm Phil, and you know I hate acting, but we love fixing cars, including the new hybrids. To learn how they feel to drive, come by and test drive our Honda Accord or Prius. Phil's Auto Clinic is fully equipped to do all of your hybrid service, including replacing the battery. Truly, we'll give your hybrid the same AAA certified service as always for computer reprogramming, electrical, drivability, smog, air conditioning, or routine maintenance. Call today for an appointment. Phil's Auto Clinic, where caring makes the difference. The San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce and the Hemet San Jacinto Valley Chamber of Commerce are proud to recognize academic excellence in our community with this month's Student of the Month. San Jacinto High School Student of the Month is graduating senior Jessica Hess. A gifted writer with a love of learning who enjoys helping others, Jessica is greatly admired and respected by her fellow classmates and teachers. She is an excellent student and is known for her great quality of character. Adriana Sanchez was chosen as Student of the Month from Mountain View Mountain Heights High School. Prior to attending in the San Jacinto Valley, she had fallen behind in credits at larger high schools. But since arriving earlier this school year, she has worked extremely hard to catch up on credits and graduate. Adriana plans to be a nurse practitioner and someday open her own healthcare facility. Unfortunately, we did not receive any information from the high schools in the Hemet Unified School District on their nominations, but we do have the students' names and we would like to congratulate them. From Hemet High School, Nathan Timpson. From West Valley High School, Dominique Garza Gonzalez. And from Talkwitz High School, Jacob Cannon. Congratulations to all of the students for this month that have achieved so much. A very special thanks to all of the sponsors that help support this program. Now, back with more of the Valley Connection. And welcome back as we close the show and we have more events that we want to share with you and the first one is going to be happening on Saturday March 29th and it's the Ramona Pageant Parade and the route is going to be starting near Five Corners in downtown San Jacinto and it will be ending at Estudio Mansion where they're going to be holding the fifth annual People's Day celebration and for more information you can go on our website thevalleyconnection.net and you can click on the flyer that says First People's Day. And the day after that, go on out to the Hemet Public Library. The Hemet Library Foundation is hosting a Victorian tea. And once again, you can go to our website to get all the information on that or to see other shows. Be sure to check us out at www.thevalleyconnection.net. Thank you so much for joining us. And please join us next time for more of The, the Valley, Valley Connection. Connection.